Chapter 1. The Day the Sun Vanished. In the heart of Everbright, the cobblestone streets usually gleamed under the morning sun, mirroring the city's apt name. Rows of charming terraced houses stood side by side, their windows adorned with parted plants that stretched out to soak up the sun's rays. On this particular day, Daisy, a local baker, was setting up her shop for the morning rush. She had just placed a tray of freshly baked scones by the window when she noticed something amiss. The sun, which typically bathed her shop in a golden glow, was nowhere to be seen. She squinted, assuming a cloud might be obscuring its light. Yet, the sky remained a peculiar shade of dim blue-gray, like a winter dusk on a cloudless day. Outside, the usually chirpy birds seemed equally perplexed. They fluttered about, casting shadows on the streets, their songs filled with evident confusion. The florist across the street, Mr. Thompson, stood with a watering can in hand, his wiry silver hair flittering in the breeze. He glanced up, his brow furrowed, glasses sliding slightly down his nose, bit odd for an eclipse without any warning. In it, he remarked to Daisy, who had now ventured outside, her apron still tied around her waist. Very, she replied, her voice tinged with her knees. There wasn't anything in the telly or radio about it. By midday, the city's cafes, usually bustling with patrons eager for a sunny spot, had their lights on, trying to recreate the midday ambience. Parents assured their children indoors, their playful laughter replaced with hushed whispers of concern. Down the lane, dear. Evelyn Carter was stepping out of her terraced home, adjusting her elegant scarf, her long coat billowing slightly in the breeze. Noticing the abnormal lighting, she pulled out her phone, trying to access any news. The lack of information was puzzling. Known for her logical mind and not one to give in to panic, Evelyn's lips tightened with concern. Her profession told her this wasn't just a simple weather pattern. Ever bright a city named for its luminous days, was experiencing a darkness that puzzled its brightest minds. And as the day wore on, the unease grew, wrapping the city in a blanket of uncertainty. The sun, their most dependable star, had inexplicably vanished. The shadows of confusion grew longer, and a hush settled, punctuated only by the ticking of the grand clock in the town square reminding everyone that time, regardless of the sun's presence, marched steadily on. Chapter 2 A World in Shadows The prolonged darkness left ever bright disoriented. Shops that once thrived under the sun's generous embrace now bore closed signs, their interiors dimly lit by candles. The fragrance of freshly baked bread, which used to waft from Daisy's bakery, was now replaced by the smoky scent of burning wood. At the town square, the weekly market was in disarray. Farmers squinted at their wilting produce, with lettuces drooping and fruits lacking their usual vibrant hues. A sense of urgency was palpable as townsfolk rushed about, their footsteps echoing off the cobblestones, gathering what they could. Mr. Thompson, who usually had a sunny disposition to match the weather, looked particularly crestfallen. His once radiant flowers now drooped sadly, petals turning translucent without the sun's nourishment. Bloody rotten luck, he muttered, attempting to shield his delicate blooms with a large striped umbrella, though it did little against the cold. Down at the local pub, the Golden Pint, conversations were rife with speculation. Its warm wooden interiors, usually filled with jovial chatter, now resonated with hushed tones. Jack, the bartender, polished the brass taps and lined up pints for the regulars. It's the end times, mark my words, murmured old mister. Harris, a stout man with bushy eyebrows, taking a long sip from his ale, others shushed him, though his words hung heavily in the air. As the day stretched on without a hint of the sun, streetlights stayed on, their usually soft twilight glow now casting sharp, elongated shadows on the pavements. Children, usually seen running about playing catch, were huddled indoors, 
their faces pressed against window panes, their expressions a blend of wonder and apprehension. Amidst all this, dear Evelyn Carter, with her sharp, analytical mind, had convened with other scientists at the city's university. The Grand Hall, with its vaulted ceilings and towering bookshelves, was a buzz over mugs of steaming tea. Graphs were drawn, and heated discussions took place. Evelyn, her hair now pulled back into a tight bun, glasses perched on her nose, presented her initial findings. Every so often, she'd push her glasses up with a determined gesture, her face illuminated by the soft glow of the projector. The once radiant city of Everbright was grappling with an unprecedented challenge. As night melded seamlessly into another day, the difference was barely discernible, and a creeping realization began to dawn on its residents. Life without the sun was not just melancholic, but a fight for survival. Chapter 3 The Descent Below The news had spread that the top minds, including D.R. Evelyn Carter, were looking into the mysterious absence of the sun. Yet, with each passing day, the cold became more biting, and the usual warmth that the residents of Everbright were accustomed to seemed like a distant memory. Street vendors began selling thicker clothing. The town tailor, Mrs. Haversham, a plump, rosy-cheeked lady, started stitching heavier woolen garments. Her once lively shop, with its lilting tune of the bell every time someone entered, now had a consistent hum of sewing machines and the occasional hiss of a steam iron. Food became an immediate concern. The supermarket aisles, usually abundant with fresh produce, now saw lengthy queues. The clatter of trolleys and the low murmurs of anxious conversations filled the air. People moved quickly, their breath visible, clutching lists and grabbing cans of preserved foods. Daisy, whose bakery was once filled with the delightful aroma of fresh pastries, now had a sign that read, Rationed bread available. Soon, the prospect of relocating became a prominent discussion. The town hall, a grand building with white columns and a tall clock tower, saw its main assembly room filled to the brim. The mayor, a tall, lean man with speckled gray hair and a penchant for wearing blue suits, stood at the podium. His usually booming voice had a solemn tone. We must consider moving below ground for warmth and safety. Whispers filled the room, but the consensus was clear Everbright needed to adapt. Teams were quickly formed. Miners, builders, and engineers convened, drafting plans on large blueprints. Sites were chosen, and the once bustling city streets were now filled with the sounds of digging and construction. Dr. Carter, ever the pragmatist, had already begun her research underground. She was allocated a vast cavern, the walls of which glistened with moisture. It wasn't long before she discovered the geothermal vents, warm to the touch. These vents, releasing steam and warmth, soon became the city's lifeline. Temporary tents were pitched around these vents, with families huddling together, their faces reflecting the amber glow of makeshift lanterns. The grandeur of Everbright was now below its surface. The network of tunnels, chambers and halls, intricately designed with safety in mind, was lit by lamps and lanterns. The echo of children's laughter, the soft strumming of a guitar, or the aroma of a stew being cooked over a geothermal vent became commonplace. In this subterranean world, hope became the central theme. The community spirit of Everbright shone brightly, even if the sun did not. Chapter 4 The Sun's Obscure Cage Within the labyrinthine corridors of Everbright's underground city, a specific chamber buzzed with ceaseless activity. This was D.R. Evelyn Carter's research hub, the expansive cavern, with its vaulted ceilings and walls shimmering from the heat of the geothermal vents, was filled with tables cluttered with instruments, papers, and devices. Every day, scientists and researchers in white lab coats huddled, murmured, and experimented. Amidst the soft hum of machinery and the occasional beep of instruments, D.L. Carter S.A.T. at the central table, 
her eyes often scanning through the microscope or peering at the screen that displayed celestial images. It was during one of these intense research sessions that D.R. Jasper Mitchell, a young astrophysicist with a mop of curly brown hair and glasses almost always askew, rushed into the chamber. His usually calm face looked flushed. Evelyn, you need to see this, he exclaimed, beckoning her over to a screen. The image displayed was a deep space snapshot, showing a massive dark expanse, not just around the sun, but enveloping it. It's not just an absence of light, Josper began, catching his breath. It's a layer of some dark matter, almost like a cocoon. Evelyn's usually composed face showed a flicker of astonishment. She adjusted her glasses, studying the image intently. This is beyond anything we've encountered, she murmured. The chamber buzzed with heightened energy as researchers huddled around the screen, their faces a mix of awe and concern. Weeks turned into months. The underground chambers saw tireless experimentation. Everbright's finest minds united their purpose singular to understand and hopefully disperse the mysterious dark matter. Teams of engineers worked alongside scientists, crafting devices and conducting tests. The heart of their endeavor was a machine they named Luminous, a tall, sleek structure filled with dials, screens and wires. Its purpose, to transmit a wave powerful enough to disrupt the dark matter's hold on the sun. At the unveiling of Luminous, the underground city's inhabitants gathered in a large chamber. The mayor stood alongside D.R. Carter, his face reflecting the gravity of the moment. Today, we take our first step in reclaiming our sun, he declared, his voice echoing through the cavern. As Evelyn activated Luminous, a soft hum permeated the room, building in intensity. The machine glowed, casting an ethereal light on the hopeful faces surrounding it. At this moment, beneath the Earth's surface, the spirit of Everbright shone with unwavering determination, their quest to return light to their world never more pronounced. Chapter 5 Don's Embrace Days after the activation of Luminous, the underground chambers of Everbright held their collective breath. The routine continued, but there was a palpable undercurrent of anticipation. Children, now accustomed to the subterranean world, played games by the warm vents, but often paused, their innocent faces tilted upwards as if expecting to see a glint of sunshine through the rock. At the heart of this city below, the chamber that housed Luminous became a focal point. Dr. Evelyn Carter, with her team, kept a close watch on the device's readings and the celestial images that displayed the sun's status. One particular morning, when the concept of mourning was merely a memory and a hope. Daisy, the baker, was preparing her usual rationed loaves when she felt a subtle change in the chamber's temperature. She paused, domed need, sensing rather than seeing a soft glow. Following her instincts, she moved towards the chamber's entrance, drawn towards a light that was neither from a lamp nor a vent. Outside, in the chambers and tunnels, similar realizations occurred. Children stopped their play, and the ever-present hum of conversation and activity faded. Everyone felt an unfamiliar warmth on their skin, a gentle illumination that couldn't be mistaken. As Dr. Carter and her team watched the monitors, their faces lit up with joy and relief. The dark matter cocoon around the sun was dissipating, breaking away like mist under the morning sunlight. Luminous had worked, the moment had come. The population of Everbright, young and old, made their way to the city's exit tunnels. The mayor, D.R., Carter, and other leaders led the procession. The journey upwards, usually undertaken in dimly lit conditions, was now accompanied by a growing luminescence. Reaching the surface, the citizens of Everbright stepped out, blinking and awestruck. The skies were bathed in a glorious golden hue the sun reclaiming its throne, casting long-forgotten shadows on the cobblestone streets. Birds soared overhead, their songs harmonizing with the gasps and exclamations of joy from the crowd below. Amid the jubilation, Dior, Carter and Dior, 
Jasper Mitchell stood side by side, their faces upturned, soaking in the sun's warmth. Their hands found each other, a gesture of shared triumph and relief. Ever bright, the city that had endured an unexplained darkness emerged resilient and united. The ordeal had not only deepened their appreciation for the sun, but also for the community's unwavering spirit. And as the sun set that day, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, it wasn't a symbol of ending, but a promise of brighter days ahead. Thank you for watching. To stay up to date on our future videos, please subscribe and hit the notification bell, and let us know what you think in the comments below.